With all the negative news out there, it's easy to think that things are hopeless, especially when it comes to things like climate change and plastic pollution. But I'm here to tell you that there's plenty of good news, even today, all around the world. From a one-of-a-kind beach transformation where the trash was replaced by a unique ecosystem that helps us fight climate change to an accidental major scientific breakthrough where scientists have discovered something that can help us get rid of one of the most toxic metals known to man. Let's take a look into the future and more. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Good News. I'm your host, Regis, and now let's explore the best news from the last few weeks. Animal drug testing. Did you know that currently there are around 80,000 animals that are being used in the early stages of drug development in Europe each year? For nearly a century now, drug and chemical safety assessments have been based on laboratory testing involving rodents, rabbits, dogs, and other animals. But while this is a big problem, it doesn't stop here. Beyond the ethical concerns, obviously, animal tests can be quite expensive and time-consuming, and they don't allow us to test everything in terms of new drugs. And when they do, they often fail to offer a comprehensive understanding of chemical behavior in the human body, and frequently don't accurately predict real-world human reactions. This is a problem, obviously, but one that's maybe found its solution. What is it, you ask? Technology, of course. Researchers at the University of Edinburgh have developed a novel 3D printed device that could replace the need for drug and chemical testing on animals. It's still currently in the early stages of its life, and I know it definitely doesn't look like it could replace a real living organism, but apparently it seems to work. The little 3D printed device has five small compartments that contain human cells, representing the heart, lungs, kidney, liver, and brain. These are connected by channels that mimic the human circulatory system, and when a small molecule drug is pumped through them, the reaction to it can be evaluated, much like a real human body. Mathematical modeling has proved that the body-on-chip, as the device is called, successfully replicates the results that a drug would have in our bodies, without the need for live testing. It's also in a very neat and compact packaging, so it won't be too hard to manufacture on a bigger scale and ship to laboratories all around the world. Saiga Antelope now, for the next piece of news, allow me to welcome you to the vast steppes of Kazakhstan. Have you settled in? Great. Now, meet the Saiga Antelope, a local hero that also inhabits the grasslands of Central Asia. And here comes the good news about this peculiar beast. It's no longer threatened by extinction. Poaching, disease, climate change, disturbance, and infrastructure development all caused the Saiga's decline in the past, and still threaten it now. They've been hunted for centuries, initially for survival, but now for the commercial value of their horns, meat, and skin. Back in 2005, a mere 48,000 Saiga antelopes remained around the world, and concerns about their future were followed by tremendous efforts to save them. While the results have been moderate in Uzbekistan, that is not the case in Kazakhstan, where a complete hunting ban was imposed in 2011 and was then extended to 2021. Fast forward to today, and the Saiga population has staged an extraordinary recovery worldwide, now closing in on 1.9 million members globally. To make it official, just last December, it was officially reclassified from critically endangered to near threatened. This is a major win for conservationists all around the world. Andalusia Wetlands from grasslands to wetlands, in the heart of western Andalusia lies Doñana, a vast region filled with marshes, forests, and dunes. This haven has been involved in a fierce national and international dispute due to its water supplies, which have been dwindling after decades of climate breakdown, mining pollution, marsh drainage, and the explosive growth of soft fruit cultivation. The park is home to more than 200 endangered plant and animal species, many of which thrive in its aquatic habitats. As a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Doñana plays a crucial role in supporting various migratory bird populations, with over 300 bird species within its boundaries, and 100 species directly reliant on its wetlands. To put into context just how bad the water crisis is, a recent report showed that about 60% of the region's large lakes have remained unfilled since at least 2013. The area was deemed to be in critical condition, but now there's hope. 
The light at the end of the tunnel is actually a groundbreaking agreement for a one and a half billion dollar investment. It was secured in November of last year and aims to safeguard Doñana and steer the local economy away from its dependence on soft fruit, strawberries and raspberries, for example. This was done in the same year when a controversial plan from the regional government allowed farmers to illegally draw water for their strawberry irrigation needs. So the goal of the new agreement is to massively reduce the number of fruit plants in the region to protect this important ecosystem. This definitely offers some hope for the ecosystem and its hundreds of bird species. Not so much so for the strawberries though, at least for a little while. Landfill turned to forest. Next up, we have some great news about mangroves. So what are they? Mangrove forests, also called mangrove swamps, thickets, or mangles, are wetland areas that occur in coastal salted zones. In Latin America, they cover hundreds of miles of reef coastline, and their significance extends beyond their scenic beauty. They also play a crucial role in carbon storage. Estimates suggest that 4,000 square meters of mangrove forests can store more carbon in their roots and soil than a biodiverse rainforest four times that size. This gives them a vital role to play in more diverse climate strategies. Now onto the actual news. You ever been to Disneyland? It's a big place. Now imagine it covered in trash. That's roughly what the Jardim Gramacho landfill in Rio de Janeiro looked like before being converted into a thriving mangrove forest. The project is one of Latin America's largest and most successful restorations, and the numbers are there to back it up. Before it was decommissioned 11 years ago, the landfill had accumulated a staggering 80 million tons of trash between 1970 and 2012. That's equivalent to seven Eiffel Towers. The area has now been returned to nature. Where there used to be trash now stands a massive forest, the largest mangrove region within the Bay of Rio de Janeiro, with direct benefits to the surrounding area. The intricate network of roots typical of mangroves is particularly useful during storm surges because mangroves absorb approximately two-thirds of the water's kinetic energy, providing protection to the coastal areas. Beyond the environmental benefits, mangroves are invaluable in housing various fish and crustaceans, and therefore sustaining coastal fishing communities. In addition to the Hardim Gramacho project, nonprofit organizations have financed other initiatives and have successfully restored a total of 12 and a half hectares of mangroves. Car deaths. For our next topic, we take a quick look at the 2023 World Health Organization report, which tells us road traffic deaths have fallen by 16% since 2010, globally. A total of 108 countries around the world are reporting a decline in road traffic-related fatalities in that period. Ten of them, including Belarus, Denmark, and Japan, have managed to reduce road traffic deaths by 50%. Road traffic injuries are a huge problem and are actually the leading cause of death for children children and young adults aged 5 to 29 years. Almost all of the world's fatalities on the roads occur in low and middle income countries, even though they have around 60% of the world's vehicles. More than half of the fatal accidents involve vulnerable users like pedestrians, bikers, cyclists, and users of micro-mobility devices such as e-scooters. And the reasons? Speeding, driving under the influence, not using motorcycle helmets, and being distracted. It appears that the causes haven't changed. As the number of cars globally is set to double by 2030, prevention and education on these issues will play a key role in the United Nations plan to reduce the number of car fatalities by half by the same year. So twice the cars, half the problems? Count us in. But remember to always look before you cross the road and be sure to wear your seatbelt. Lead detection. In our next story, researchers in the Netherlands have quickly introduced a breakthrough in lead detection, a spray that quickly makes even the smallest amounts of runaway metal glow in a bright green color when exposed to UV lighting. The innovative mixture is sensitive, quick, and accurate, enabling the detection of lead on various surfaces, including glass, plastic, concrete, soil, metal, and even paint. The mixture does not react with similar metals like tin or copper, making it highly selective. And check this out. It can detect up to a nanogram of lead, which is a 1,000 millionth of a gram. That's really, really small. So why does this matter? 
Well, exposure to lead can affect multiple body systems and is particularly harmful to young children and women of childbearing age. It's particularly tricky because lead in the body is distributed to the brain, liver, teeth, kidney, and bones, and it stays there. It can accumulate over time and cause all kinds of irreversible damage to the point of comas and even death. Traditional detection methods required lead to be isolated and concentrated before detection, and you can imagine how complicated and slow of a process that is. The new spray-on mixture is just superior in every possible way. And you know what the best part is? It was all an accident. The researchers were researching something else entirely and discovered its potential as a lead defector as a side effect. Can we get some more accidents like this, please? Logging ban. In the final good news of this episode, forests are once again the main protagonist. In 2023, an investigation by the United States Forest Service revealed that approximately 80% of all forests and grasslands under its jurisdiction are either old growth or mature forests, meaning that the majority of trees are at least 120 years old. These areas where trees have reached a later stage of development play a crucial role in carbon storage, making them a natural ally in the fight against climate change. And so preserving them is a key step for this process. Those very old trees have trapped a significant amount of carbon, and cutting them down will slowly release it into the atmosphere. To address this danger, the presidential administration unveiled a proposal in December of last year, aiming to ban cutting them down. The proposal should effectively address major threats to these wetlands, while also protecting their cultural heritage. Despite pressure from the timber industry, the proposal is quite a significant step forward, as it marks the first time the U.S. Forest Service has committed to a national policy to protect old-growth forests, and to fight climate change, of course. The ban is scheduled to take effect in early 2025, providing the time for the Forest Service to finalize protective rules. However, its sustainability somewhat depends on the 2024 presidential elections. Uh, well, it's going to be an interesting year for the world, but let's hope it stays uneventful for these ancient forests. And that's it for another episode of Good News. Tell us which news makes you the most optimistic about the future down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.